everybody, Jen from Scrapping Under the Influence. I am back with my latest design team project for Doodlebug. So today I have for you a small album that will use pretty much exclusively the 6x6 paper pad. Um, so I have used, hello again, um, I did use, no, a little bit better than half of the pad, um, matching solids, and then one piece of full-size petite prints. I have a couple of pages in here that have the 6x6 petite prints, um, but there we go. So on the front here, I have a shaker. Uh, this I did using the Doodlebug Hello Again cut files available on shop.lauriewhitlock.com. Um, these are so fun. I've been collecting, let's say, <laughs> doodlebug cut files for forever, basically since I discovered them. Um, so I tend to buy them for every collection, so um, I was very excited to see that these were out already so that I could do something that I would kind of had in my head since I first saw uh, the sneak peeks of the Hello Again collection. Um, on the spine here, I've got a chit chat piece, um, the little rainbow puffy stickers, and then, I'm sorry, not rainbow, butterfly puffy stickers, and then the other little puffy icons down here, so the little trees in the house and the clouds, and on the back, we've just got a six by six petite print. So when you open this up, I kept this fairly simple. Um, the pages are all, page bases are all six by six. The album itself is six and a quarter by six and a quarter. We've got four pages total. So over here I've got just a photo mat with an odds and ends piece, uh, bits and pieces, and one of the puffy icons. This opens up like so, and then again, and then again, because I wanted a way to keep this wreath paper not necessarily obviously not intact, but to give it the illusion of being mostly intact, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, so what I've done here is for each one of these photo mats, I have fussy cut along the edge of the wreath so that you can slide a photo underneath that and you're still getting the full effect of that wreath. Um, so I do go through that in the tutorial. Kept those blank just so that you can add pictures there. I will come back and tie that in a bit. Here we've got just another pocket, uh, bits and pieces, chit chat, one of the little uh, butterfly shape sprinkles, uh, chit chat over here. I love the foil accents on this in this collection. It's just amazing. This opens up. This is held closed with a magnet. I have used some of the washi tape here, and I typically am not a big washi tape person, but this butterfly washi tape has gold on it, gold foiling as well. So I did use that on the, the plain um, cardstock mats in here. On this side, we've got a four by six waterfall. And I used the smaller version of that wreath paper here. And then I continued with those, um, with the washi tape along the bottom on the solids. So here was kind of something a little bit different than what I've done before. So this is a shaker pop that I have put a magnet on to hold this page closed. So you take this off and play with it, which is of course what we all want to do with shaker pops. And then you open this up and we've got a nice belly band in here that you could put several pictures or photo mats underneath. And then that just magnetizes back on there to hold the whole thing closed couple of the um, odds and ends there and one of the chit chat that I cut in half because that just went so well with that um, doodle pop. Okay here we've got just a pocket and what I want I wanted this you make me smile chit chat but I didn't want it just hanging off there so I did use a scrap of the gold dot acetate um, that I used on my last doodle bug project to kind of stabilize that little piece of chit chat. Over here I've got another chit chat piece and I've got a doodle pop. 
And this folds up and I continued with the washi tape here. And then we've got just a nice little tuck spot down here. Okay, back here, I just layered up some uh, odds and ends to build the little scene with let's stay home on the opposite side. On this side, we have stacked pockets. This flips up and there is actually a pocket here. So you can put something in here and close it or you can do your tags and tuck them in in front there to hold that closed, which was my original intent. And then I decided I didn't want to cover this up. So I took the tags out. <laughs> so um, there we go. That is the project. And as always, thank you for watching. If you end up making any of these projects, please, by all means, share them with me on my uh, channel and my Instagram. I am on all social media as Scrapping Under the Influence. So um, if you make any of these things, I want to see them. Tutorial starts now. Thanks. Okay, so to build the base for our album, you're going to need three pieces of medium weight chipboard, two that are six and a quarter by six and a quarter, one that is six and a quarter by two. We are going to wrap these with black cardstock. To wrap the spine, you need a piece that is eight and a quarter by five. And to wrap the two cover pieces, you need eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter. Okay, I have covered the backs, except for one little strip, <laughs> with tape. And I'm going to grab my scoreboard to help line these up. So, we're going to start with our cover pieces. I have acrylic, one inch acrylic spacers that I use for this. You can lightly score and use that to line this up so that you have one inch all the way around. You can take scraps of chipboard and make the spacers that way. Um, so you've got a couple of options there. So I am going to go ahead oops, and take the backing off of my tape, use my spacers to line that up and drop that down. Okay. Now we do the same thing with the second cover piece. Okay. For the spine, instead of one inch down that long side, we want one and a half. Okay. So the cardstock to wrap the spine piece is eight and a quarter by five. Our spine is six and a quarter by two. So you need an inch and a half on each side and then an inch on the top and bottom. So again, I've got this covered with tape. The next thing you're going to do, I'm going to take one of my cover pieces, is I'm going to fold the cardstock around the chipboard. So I'm just using my work surface, holding that over and down, and then burnishing that crease. Okay. So now you can see when this is folded, you've got those corners that you can really see where those corners are. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut out this square. And there's a couple ways you can do this. You can do it where you cut along that fold line, like so. And then you fold this in and then miter. Okay, and then you would fold this side in and miter so that you have a nice clean corner. Okay, I have seen some people that will cut straight across like this. I don't have good luck doing that, so I'm not going to do that. What I've been doing is folding that in and doing that little miter like so. 
which gives you that and then folding in and doing it the other way so I'm not having to cut those corners twice it's whichever you're comfortable with I know um, with this style of wrapping the album covers that um, there's a couple different ways you can do that okay so then I'm gonna fold in the other way and cut those off okay next thing I'm gonna do is I am gonna run quarter inch tape score tape around my outside edges you can just glue these you can just tape them um, again it's just preference I use a combination of the tape and the glue because then when I go to wrap this and I fold these over the tape is going to help it stick immediately and then the glue will have time to set afterwards so we've got that I'm going to go ahead and go around here and pull off the backing on all of my tape at once. You can do them one at a time. I just am in the habit of doing them all at once. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to run glue along the edge of that chipboard and then just a little bit in the middle there. Let me get a paper towel ready because I know I got too much glue in that one spot. And then what I'm doing is I'm taking my bone folder, I am pushing the cardstock up against the side of the chipboard, and then coming over and down. And I'm going to get that extra glue out of there. Okay. I like to go to the opposite side. You can just work your way around. It's again, personal preference. Let's not get glue on the scoreboard again. Not that, that would be the first time that's happened, but you know. Okay. And then I'm going to come around. Of course, it doesn't help that I literally just refilled this yesterday, and I think I probably overfilled it, to be honest. Okay. And then one more. Okay, so there's your first cover piece. We're going to do the exact same thing with the second one. using my work surface to fold the paper around or the cardstock that is around the chipboard Oops. okay and then I'm gonna go ahead and miter again And if you've been around a while and you've followed my tutorials before, you know how to do this. So you can probably go ahead and fast forward through this. But since this is one for Doodlebug, and if you are new to my channel and my projects, um, that's why I'm going through the entire process that normally I would do one of them and then do the second one off camera. But that's okay. We will do it this way today. You're brand new to mini albums and doing the whole thing from scratch and not you know doing ring bound or using you know um, an album with pocket pages this one will be a good one to start on I do actually have a playlist on my channel that is a beginner a beginner mini album series that I go through the hows and the whys of, of some of these steps um, in 
as I think I put it when I did that bite size pieces. So there's one video for the covers, there's one for the hinge, one for the pages, so that you're not, you know, trying to sit down and do the entire thing in one sitting. You can do it in steps. So um, that is out there as well. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get the backing off the tape again. And then we'll go back around. Oh my gosh, I seriously overfilled this. Wow. I'm just not going to be happy till I have glue everywhere. <laughs> Which will be the first time, but you know, it happens. And two, when you burnish this down with the bone folder, and this is why you don't need a ton of glue, is when you burnish that down, it will spread the glue that's in there underneath the cardstock, which is where you keep seeing it popping out the ends there. Okay. And there's our second cover piece. Now, the spine. This is a little bit different. So we're still going to fold our cardstock around. And we're still going to miter, just like we did before. Okay. And then fold and miter again. Now, on this one, we're not going to do anything with these two pieces. These are what I call the wings. That's how we're going to attach the whole thing together. All we're going to fold over and glue down are these end pieces. Okay. So I am still going to do my tape and glue method on this. Sometimes I do just glue, but it just depends on what I'm working on. Sorry. Okay, so then we're going to do the exact same thing again. And my glue is going to run everywhere again because it's overfilled. Okay. And on the other side. fold this over or turn this over and I'm going to use the bone folder and just burnish that along the side so you can see the difference how that's very defined now. Do the same thing on the other side. Okay and then I'm going to go ahead and do tape on this outside edge on both sides and then we'll go ahead and attach the covers. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to pull the backing off one side and then I am going to do some glue. I really got it too close to the spine there, but that's okay. I'm going to lay my cover on top of the spine. I'm going to use my finger just to kind of guide it. And when you feel it slide off, 
you're going to go ahead and drop it down. Okay. Okay. Got a tiny bit of a gap there, but that's okay. You kind of want that sometimes. Okay. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And again, I'm laying it on top of the spine. I'm using my finger to kind of guide it. And when I feel it drop off, drop it down and burnish. Okay? Now, we have a reinforcement piece that goes on the inside here. So this is six inches by six and one eighth because our cover is six and a quarter. You want to go a one eighth of an inch shorter. So for this, we do need to cover the back of this completely in tape. Try to find the six by six sheets. So, sorry about that. Okay. On this step, you do want to use tape, not glue, because you want it to lay flat. So what I'm going to do is I've got a six by six score tape sheet. If you're using the rolls, if you're using, you know, whatever. The rolls, you can do this same kind of thing where you just peel back a corner of it and line it up. And it's going to be preference on how you line, you know, which way you turn it to line it up. For me, I need it facing me. And I'm going to get it lined up in that corner. And then I, all I have to do with this, and when you're brand new to this, the sheets of score tape versus the rolls are going to be your friend. They will make it immensely easier to learn how to make this style of album cover. Okay. I've got just a little bit there hanging off. Because even though it was a six by six, it still ends up being just a tiny bit bigger. Okay, and then I've got this little eighth of an inch that doesn't have tape on it. So what I'm going to do is pull this off. And then I'm going to go ahead and just run my quarter inch up to that edge. And across just to make sure I get it because I don't want this lifting up on um, the book okay all right so now I'm not gonna just turn it over and plop it down I want to make sure I've got it turned the right way especially with one that is this close in size Okay, so that is correct. And I'm just going to center that up and drop it down. Okay, and while it is still flat, I'm going to go ahead and erase my <laughs> measurement off of here just because I don't want part of that sticking out from underneath the hinge when we get to that point. Okay, so now what I'm going to do. So I'm going to fold this up and just kind of run my bone folder in here. Now if you've got, and I don't know where that other one is, there's a big gray one that has kind of a sharper edge. Don't use the sharp edge. You don't want to poke through the cardstock here, okay? And then I'm going to do it on this other side as well. And again, I'm just kind of working that tape and that cardstock down in there. Okay. Then, and this is just me, I will fold it up and just kind of squeeze to get everything nice and seated where it's supposed to be. And there's our cover. It is that easy. Okay. Spine. I'm sorry, not spine. Hinge. Hinge. Okay. So for our hinge, you need a piece of cardstock that is six by five and a half. 
Okay, we are going to put five and a half along the top of the scoreboard. And yes, mine is turned sideways because if I try to do it down like this, like this, I tend to end up with crooked lines. If I do it this way, it's more like drawing a line and it makes it easier. So if you ever have a problem scoring, try turning your, your scoreboard, okay? So we are gonna score all the way across at half every half inch. So half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, and again, I am going to erase my measurement off of here because I actually meant to turn this over the other way so that would end up on the back side, but that's okay. So we were at three, three and a half, four, four and a half, and five. Okay. So now when we fold this up, that's all I want, I want the pencil. We want to glue those together, skip. Those together, skip. Those together, skip. Those together. So you're going to have four tabs when this is done, and you're going to have three gussets. Okay? When you are, if you're new to this, this will, marking the back side of your hinge will make it much, much easier to keep it straight and understand what it is you're trying to do, okay? So we're gonna fold and burnish. And then I'm gonna glue. And I'm really wishing that this was not so full right now, so I'm gonna kinda get messy and then burnish that down, okay? You can use tape when you're doing your hinges, however, and I used to use tape when I did my hinges. What I found, however, is it tends to make them, tends to add a little bit of bulk to them and it tends to make them not want to turn. So um, you can use it, it's up to you, okay? We're not doing anything on this one yet. We're going to go to the next two and we're going to fold the score line between our X's and burnish. And then we will glue again. Okay. Okay. We'll give that a second to dry. Well, that one's drying, we can fold the first one back over and burnish. Okay. And then that should have been enough time that we can fold this over and burnish. Flip it the right side up and do it again. Okay, so there's two of our taps. Okay, skip our line, go back to our X's again, hold the score mark in between, and burnish. too much glue. Okay. Give that a second to set. And then we can go from our last two that we bent. We can fold that over and burnish. The other way and burnish again and there we go there's hinge number three so right now we've got our three lined pieces are all right there we'll fold over our last piece and burnish and 
again. direction and burnish again. Okay. So there's our hinge. That is going to go centered on our spine. Okay. So all we do for that is again, we're just going to put glue on the back side of this. And you can be like all precise and measure and, you know, mark where it needs to go. I'm just going to eyeball it because I've made enough of these at this point. I'm usually right on. <laughs> okay. So, hand is in the book. We're going to move on to our page bases. So, you need four sheets that are 6 by 12. This is going to be super, super easy. All you're going to do is score these at six inches. Essentially, we're folding them in half. Honestly, this is the absolute simplest way to do a page base. Make it six inches wide and whatever height you want to do your book, because then you're not having to piece two of them together, which I'll do a project where we make bigger pages. And I've done a number of projects where I make bigger pages, but not for Doodlebug yet. So, okay. So we've got our four pages. And bring the book back and what I'm gonna do is open this up so my hinge is not glued right there in that top corner so we're gonna have to give it just a minute to dry okay well that's drying what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your hinge your page that is. You're going to fold your hinge over, slide this piece under, lay this down on top and what you're going to do is kind of line up where it needs to go. Okay. So my score line, because I can erase this, this will be okay. My score line and where this page folds is right there where I just drew that line that apparently didn't go all the way down. Okay, so there's where this folds. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to lay this in here like so and fold that over. And then you're going to kind of wiggle it back till you have just maybe a sixteenth of an inch. So here's the edge of my paper and you can just, you're just barely back from that hinge. You don't want to go fully flush with the hinge because then it can make the pages hard to turn. You need it to come back just a little bit. Okay. So what I'm going to do, so 
very carefully get some glue on there. I'm going to fold this over, make sure it's lined up top to bottom, and then I'm just going to pull it back so I have that little bit of a gap. Okay? Then I can go back the other direction, can open this up, and now you can run glue along here all the, on all three sides and close this off entirely, or you can run glue along the bottom and along the side and leave this open in case you wanted to add um, tags or something in here. I always end up leaving mine open thinking I'm going to do tags, and then I never do tags. Okay, so put that in there, pull it back, and then I'm just burnishing this down with my hands. You can do it with the bone folder. It's entirely up to you. There's our first page. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing again. And sometimes if your hinge feels a little stiff, just fold it back and forth and go over it with the bone folder a few times to loosen it up. Okay. So I'm going to line this up. I'm pushing it all the way in, getting it lined up where I want it. And then I'm pulling it back to give myself that little bit of a gap. And to make sure I'm lined up with my page behind it. Okay. Then I will flip back the other direction. I'll do my glue down here and on here. Flip back over go back the other direction so it's laying nice and flat. And there you go, there's your next page. Okay, we're just going to continue on just like this. If you're doing one with lots of pages, um, when you get about halfway you can start doing it from the opposite side to make sure they're all laying nice and flat. This one where we're only at four pages will be just fine the way it is. Okay. Oh, no. No, no, no. Way too much. Okay. So again, getting it all the way in there, make sure it's lined up, and then just scooching it back. Okay, now I know there are a lot of people that will put all the flaps and pockets and things on before they put them in the book. Honestly, that gives me more anxiety than just doing it while it's in the book. There are people that will put flaps and fla everything on there and decorate and mat and embellish and do everything and then put it in the book. I did that I think one time, not on a tutorial, and ended up with one entire page that was upside down. It was right on one side, it was upside down on the other. I haven't done it since. <laughs> so there are some rare exceptions. Usually if I've got something super chunky that I needed to do on the cover when I could still put it totally, totally flat. But for the most part, you will not see me um, doing that with my albums. Okay. All right. So again, we're lined up. We're going to pull it back. Okay. And then over.
right. All right, so let's work on our page elements. I'm gonna come back to the front of page one because that's probably gonna be our most involved and that's like not even a lot. So we're gonna start with the back of page two. So this one is just gonna be a very simple pocket. So my cardstock is seven and a half or seven by two and a half. We are gonna score this at half an inch, starting with the seven inch at the top, half an inch, turn, half an inch again, turn, and half an inch. Okay. So for pockets, you're gonna miter at the top up here. And then where this score lines intersect on the bottom corners, you're gonna cut all the way across, right through where those intersect. Okay. Then we're gonna go ahead and fold and burnish. In doing that with the corners, you'll see you don't ha you'll either have no very little overlap or no overlap on those corners when you fold this over so it doesn't make your corners like kind of pooch out because they're too bulky. Okay, so we're going to put this just down here at the bottom. And it's going to go flush with the bottom of the page and the outside edge. Looks like I had a paper towel here to get extra glue. And give that a second to start to dry and then get your sides. Okay. All right. Super easy. Okay, front of page two. We have a couple of flaps. And these I just pulled from my scraps from cutting every all the page elements and whatnot. So I've got one flap that is three and three quarters by five and one that is five and a half by six. With the three and three quarters by five, you're gonna put the five inch side at the top of your scoreboard. Score it half an inch. On the other one, you're gonna take the sorry, five and a half inch side at the top and score it at half an inch. Okay, we're going to miter the tops of these. So you're just going to start from that score line and just take a little wedge off the top because that's just going to make it, when you're matting and whatnot, it's going to just be, it just looks nicer. Okay, so I'm going to fold and burnish. book. Okay, so I'm going to turn it sideways because this one is going to go over here. And I just want it turned so that I can line it up and center it on that side over here. Okay, and I'll turn it the other direction for my other flap. We are going to do a magnet on here. So let me grab some magnets. I think. Well, maybe I do have them. Magnets in one other spot. I'm trying to think how I ended up doing that. So, let me grab 
some score tape. I'm going to pick up my magnet. And I want this to go about there. And then what I'm going to do nope, had it right the first time. I'm going to just lay that like that. to do is lay this over and just burnish and then that will go down where it needs to go. Okay, back side of page two, we are going to do a waterfall. Okay, so we're going to do our waterfall where it's going to open like a book. So I have four pieces that are four and a half by six. I'm going to put this four and a half inch side at the top of my scoreboard and score it half an inch on all of these. Okay, waterfall pages, you are not gonna, going to miter these, okay? But before we put anything down, let's go ahead and fold and burnish these really quickly. do that I am going to take some of the new mint doodle twine and that's what we're going to use to um, hold our waterfall closed okay so I'm going to take a little bit of that and I'm going to take it over here on the outside edge of the page Okay. I am going to just center that as best I can. And I'm going to tape it down just so it'll stay put. Okay. Now I can take my first waterfall piece and glue it down. I am going to go ahead and backing off of that tape. And then we'll just go ahead and put this one down. Okay. Now we'll open it up and we'll do our next one right up against the bottom of the tab for the first one. And where this one runs the entire width of the page, it's going to be really easy to get this in here and get it straight. You're not going to have to worry about it like drifting or shifting to one side or the other. Okay. And I always find it easier when doing waterfalls basically to kind of do them what is essentially going to be upside down because then I can see better where they need to line up at. Crying out loud. Okay. And then our last one. And there's that. So now I'm going to come on the other side. I'm going to pull off another little bit of the twine. I'm going to line it up as close to the end as I can. Or, I'm sorry, as close to center as I can, and I'm going to tape that down. So then when we mat this underneath here, that's going to reinforce it from the other side. And so what I can do now, because this is definitely way more twine than I needed, but it's 
better to have it be a little bit long than not long enough. <laughs> crazy with this. It is way too much, but that's okay. So I'm just going to tie this off like so. And then I'm going to trim those down. All right, so that's done there. Front of page three, I've got two flaps and a belly band. So we're going to do the belly band first. The belly band is seven inches by two inches. We're going to put this with the seven inches at the top of the scoreboard, score it a half an inch, turn it all the way around, and score it half an inch again. Okay, this we are going to miter. center that up on our front of page three. Okay. Okay. The two flaps are going to be three and five eighths by six. Okay. Because what we're going to do is some gate will gatefold flaps that are going to close down over the front of this and then um, open it up and then there's your belly band. So with the three and five eighths at the top, I'm going to score it half an inch and half an inch. And again, I'm going to miter those. I'm going to do them both at the same time just to save some time here. Okay, and then fold and burnish. Okay, so now I'm going to put this one down. I'm just going to hold it where it's going to ultimately get glued. And they are a little bit bigger than I needed them to be. So I'm going to grab my trimmer and I'm going to take an eighth of an inch off of this one. I'm going to take an eighth off of this one. They may have been right at three and a half now that I think about it. I think I did that wrong when I cut them originally. Okay. Yep, that's exactly what it is. So three and a half by six, not three and five eighths. I apologize. But that's why we checked them before we glued them down to make sure that we didn't need to adjust them. So what we're going to do on this one to hold it closed is we are going to do magnets. However, what we're going to do is either a cut apart or an odd, odds and end piece or something that we're going to back and put the magnets in that and then the magnets underneath this so that you will remove that to open this up. Okay. So for now, I'm going to leave this alone. Okay. The back side of page three. It's just going to be a side loading pocket. So this is seven by three and a half. We are going to score this half an inch on a short side, half an inch on a long, and half an inch on a short. And then we are going to again miter at the top. And then through 
the score lines on the bottom corners. And then fold and burnish. Fold and burnish. Fold and burnish. Okay. And this one, I'm going to put it to this outside edge. Glue that down. I'm going to give it just a second before I fold it back. And when I do pockets, I will always do the bottom of the pocket and then come back and do the sides. I seem to have way better luck with getting them down straight doing them that way than I do doing them any other way. Okay? So, the next one we're going to do is we are going to do a tuck spot. Okay? So this is one and a half inches by six. There is no scoring. All we are going to do is glue this on the bottom. Okay? If you wanted to, you could do a little bit of glue up the sides. I'm actually going to do it just like that. Okay. And then we have a flap that is six and a half by six. So we're going to put the six and a half at the top of the scoreboard and score this at half an inch and then miter. This is going to go at the top here, so I'm going to turn it upside down just to be able to easily line it up, make sure I'm all the way at the top and I'm all the way at the outside edge, and then down it goes. Okay. The back side of page six, I'm sorry, page six, page four. <laughs> Oh my gosh. We're going to do two tags. Tags are six by three and a half. Because those were the ones I thought were wrong for the gatefold, but apparently we're right to start with, but that's okay. So we're going to use those as tags. So I don't need to do anything for those. I'm just going to set those aside. I have a flap that is six by four and three quarters. Okay. And then I have a pocket. So, and the pocket is two and a half by seven. So let's start with the pocket. So again, we're going to start, score half an inch on a short side, turn, half an inch on the long side, turn it again, half an inch on the short side. For the flap, we're going to put the four and three quarters at the top and score at half an inch. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and miter. on the bottom corners. And then I'm going to miter on the flap as well. Okay. So fold and burnish. And fold and burnish. And do my pocket first. So I'm going to put glue on the bottom of the pocket. Put that down. Okay. And then I'm going to get the sides and glue those down as well. I'm going to turn the whole thing upside down, oh. except I did not burnish enough over here so it didn't stick, because that happens sometimes. <laughs> okay, so the flap is going to go up here on the top, and it's still longer than I needed it to be. Okay, 
So, I'm gonna go ahead and wipe the glue off of that. So I should have measured, I should have double checked it before I put it down. It is just like a quarter of an inch too long, okay? So I am gonna take, I'm actually gonna take 3 eighths off of this. And this is one of these things I'm gonna kinda leave it up to you. My plan on this was, this would be just slightly short, but then our two tags are gonna sit in this pocket and hold this closed, okay? So in order for that to work, this flap has to not go over the front of the pocket, okay? So I cut it from four and three quarters down to, what would that be? Four and five eighths by six. If you don't want the tags to sit in front of the, the flap, you can just leave it as is and just put the tags underneath. Okay, so these will just sit in front of that and hold that flap down, okay? So let's go back to the front of page one. So what I wanna do with this is I want this page, I want the flaps to come up, over, and down. The reason for that is in the Hello Again paper collection, there is that adorable page that has the wreath on it. I want to be able to put that on this page or this layout mostly, not totally intact. I mean, we're going to have to cut it into four pieces, but so you're not losing any of that wreath. Okay. So. This is probably gonna be the trickiest thing we do in this entire book. So first up, I have a flap that is six by six and a half, okay? With the six and a half at the top, I'm gonna to score this at half an inch, okay? And I'm gonna miter, okay? So this, ultimately will be our flap that goes up, okay? My next two flaps are both slightly smaller. So they are six by six, and I am sorry for doing this, and seven sixteenths. Okay, because we want them just small enough that this will all fold together without running into each other and bubbling. And to do that, we don't want to take an eighth of an inch off because that's going to be too much. So you're going in between the eighth and the full number. Okay, so again, we're going to go six and a half at the top. Well, six and seven sixteenths at the top. We're just going to call it six and a half for simplicity's sake. And we're going to score it half an inch and we're going to miter. Okay. Now, I'm going to go ahead and fold and burnish. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this on my work surface with the tab towards me because that's what's going to glue on the top of the page in the book. Okay. This one, so when this flips up, this one will flip out, okay? So what I wanna do is glue this one in the right position from the get-go. So I'm gonna pick this up, I'm gonna lay it down on top And I'm going to make sure that flips up and then out. Okay. Did I pick up the wrong one to start with? I did. Dang it, I knew. 
you better. Okay. So apparently I those are both my shorter ones, and this is my full six and a half inch. Yeah. This is the one I should have started with. Okay, so double check you are starting with the six and a half by six. Now, we're going to try that again. So this is the full size piece, okay? We want this piece to go there. And I'm doing the tab to the back, which normally is not how I would do this, simply to make sure it's going to fold over where I want it to fold over. Okay, there we go. That's much better, because now they're the same height, <laughs> which was the problem. Okay, and then we'll open it up. This one, we're gonna do the same way. So it's gonna go to the back and then fold it up to make sure everything is gonna sit where it needs to sit, okay? Actually, no, that one can go on the inside. Okay. All right, so no, that one can go on the inside here. Okay. And we'll fold it over to make sure everything lays nice and flat. And it does. And then we will put that whole assembly in the book. Okay. Except, no, we're not doing that just yet. We need ribbon. I'm sorry, not ribbon. Twine. Twine. We need twine. Okay. So we're going to do the same thing we did on our waterfall. And we're going to start this at the top up here. We're going to tape that down and then we're going to glue. <laughs> oh my gosh, some days I'm telling you. Okay, so that's going to go like so. And then we will take another piece of twine for this bottom. line up approximately the center down here do it pretty much just like that and just pull it down okay and there is that inside covers and I actually had started with those originally and realized I had done a measurement incorrectly um, and I think the front inside cover we're gonna leave alone so we're just gonna do the back inside cover we're gonna do stacked pockets which are actually incredibly easy so this should have been seven and a quarter and I did an eight and a quarter so I'm just gonna trim that off okay so seven and a quarter not eight and a quarter by three 
and seven and a quarter by four and a half. Okay, so you're gonna score just like you have been. You're gonna start with the long side, half an inch, turn it, half an inch again, turn, half an inch again, okay? On both pockets. Then we are gonna miter just like we did before. And we'll just pretend that, you know, I didn't originally mess these up. And I'm doing it all the way around. Okay. So I'm gonna flip back to the back of the book. Okay. We're gonna start with the taller pocket. So I'm going to fold and burnish. Okay. And we are going to put this on the back inside cover. And you're going to go all the way to the outside edge in the bottom corner. And put that down. And then do your sides. That just does not want to stay put. Okay, and then we're going to do the same thing with this one. And that's just going to go on top of this. Now that'll get covered up when I'm at it, so that's okay. So again, I'm going to start with the bottom. Like so. And then burnish those sides up. So that is it. Construction of the album base is done. Now on to matting, and I'm going to show you how we're going to do the matting on this little fold out. And that is what we're going to start with in just a second. Okay, so I have the absolutely beautiful wreath page. Okay, first thing we're going to do is cut off the branding strip, and you know what, this probably, oh yeah, that definitely needs a new blade in it. Sorry, bear with me one second. I've got them right here. I meant to do that yesterday. Really hating about every paper trimmer I own right now. Again. <laughs> I don't know, maybe it's just me. I don't know if everybody else goes through that too, but I get to a point where I'm just like, yeah, this thing is not fun. Okay, pull the branding strip off. Okay, so this, of course, is 12 by 12. We want a border around this when we, um, mat it. Let's Jennifer tie that into a knot because that makes sense. Oh my gosh, okay, I'll fix that in a minute. Okay, so we can't just like cut this into four pieces and have it fit. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take an eighth of an inch off of each side. Okay, so there's an eighth. An eighth. There's no way that was an eighth. And then this side. Okay. All right. 
now I am going to cut this. So I should be at, if I go five and three quarters here, I should be at five and three quarters here. I am not. So we're going to take, actually no, that's okay. All right, so it's actually going to be five and seven eighths, I think. Yes, okay. Sorry. It's been a while since I've done one like this. Okay, five and seven eighths. By five and seven eighths. Okay. And that's the bottom of it. So kind of pay attention because this, the butterflies on this are directional, <laughs> and you don't want upside down butterflies. Okay. So that will go there. That one will go there. Okay. So for now, I'm going to clip this one here because I want to do something else with this. Okay. And then the same thing here, we'll go five and seven eighths and cut that one. That will go up here. those tags out because they are not going to stay put until everything's matted. And we'll go up here. Okay. So what I would like to do, and I'm not sure if this is going to work, so I'm going to look and see. I have a scrap over here that is four by four. Okay, so what I would like to do is do a 4x4 four four photo mat that tucks partially in underneath that. Okay, so we would put it about like this. In order to do that, I'm going to need to get in here with a knife and fussy cut, okay? So as I'm saying this, I'm really rethinking that decision because that is going to be absolutely hard to do, I think. So you would have to fussy cut down around all of that, which could be done. In fact, where is, there it is, okay. So I would cut, I bet this needs a new blade, but maybe not, maybe we're okay. Okay. 
So, yeah, messy cut around all of those little pieces. So that what I would then do is this would go down. He would glue under here. He would glue under here, and then the mat. Light in. which I wouldn't use the black one, of course, but so that would sit in there like so. And I would do this on all four of these mats. Okay. Just something to think about if you don't want the hassle. I totally understand because that was definitely not the most fun to cut out. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that is my plan there. So let me finish this off. I'll come back and then we'll kind of go through a little bit, of, a couple of things on the rest of the matting and then our one little magnetic element. Okay, so I've started matting and for the most part I've kept it with the exception of course of our little front page here that we already talked about. Um, so yeah, that actually was not as hard as I thought it was going to be with the little finger knife kind of going around those areas so I could tuck those photo mats underneath there. was not as bad as I thought. And then two, it's loose so that you could tuck your photo up underneath the edge there as well. So um, I still need to, of course, mat the back pieces there and there. Um, I've got some matting to do here. This waterfall is done. The outside of this one is done. That's where we're going to work on next. Um, right here, I've still got in there, and I've still got those two pieces to mat. So for the most part, I am matting with the 6x6 six six pad for this. And what we're going to do here, so I've got my matting cut for right there. What I would like to use is this little shaker pop, okay? So what I need to do open this up because of course it's not super huge there's my scissors okay I'm gonna actually cut not the pop itself but like the packaging at the top there so I can get a better idea of height wise where I need my magnets to go I need more than two I think 
so I need to find where I put my tape. There it is. So I can keep my area nice and clean right up until I start matting stuff and then it's all bets are off. All right, so that's about the center. I'm gonna put one there. I'm gonna put one there. Okay. Now we've got those. I'm not going to glue this over the top of those just yet in case we need to adjust them. Now I'm going to take a scrap, I don't even need one that big, of the black cardstock and I'm pulling this off and I'm just going to set it to the side. And what I'm going to do is lay that little border piece from the packaging around it on here. To kind of get an idea of where this is going to need to be trimmed. So. I'm going to just trim around where I traced. what I can do is I can lay this on here, make sure it's going to line up the way we want it to, and then figure out where our other two magnets are going to go. Okay. So there's one, which is why, like I said, this is not attached yet because I want to be able to adjust it just a little bit. So that's where those are going to go. So now I can take my tape again and I can just tack those down on top of my little piece that we're going to put the doodle pop on. Okay, so now we can take the backing off of the tape. And then I'm going to go ahead and put glue, even though the back of the Doodle Pop is sticky, I'm going to go ahead and glue it to my little backer piece here. Okay. Like so. So now, once we have that on there, and this is all closed up, this will sit on top there. You'll be able to take it off and shake it and open that up to get to your inside piece here. And so I did use the six by six, and I know you can't see from the light, um, the six by six uh, candy stripes and sprinkles petite prints. This is one of the new petite prints. And that's what I matted underneath our little belly band here. Because it went really well with the polka dot one. 
and there you go. And so then you can embellish around it there, and there is your other little element. Okay, I'm going to finish matting the inside of this, and then we will come back and we will work on our cover. Okay, so I used the television cut file for the Hello Again collection. These are available on shop.loriwhitlock.com. Um, you can buy them individually or you can buy the entire, um, all of the cut files for like a particular um, collection. Um, let's get rid of that. So here is my television. I am gonna size this to six inches high because our cover of course is six and a quarter inches high and we don't want it bigger than the cover. And then I'm going to select those five little lines, rainbow lines on the inside, and I'm gonna duplicate those. I'm gonna go down here in the bottom right and click um, Unite. I think it's Unite, I don't know. It's tiny and I can't see it on my screen right now. And um, to combine those into one thing, one piece, because I'm going to cut that with out of the rainbow stripe paper that looks like those lines on the um, in the paper collection. Okay, so I've got those. I'm now gonna. I've duplicated my television. I have ungrouped the television, and now I'm gonna start kind of trimming down the number of pieces that this is actually going to cut. Okay, because when you look at this when you first put it in there, there's a ton. A ton of pieces and I don't really want that many little bitty pieces that I'm gonna have to deal with so I'm gonna do some finagling with the cut file and I do this pretty much every time I use a doodle bug file so what I've done is I found the next layer and I'm slicing the other pieces into it so that I'm not cutting and you know stacking up so many different layers and I'm just gonna kind of go through and do this and I will I, I need to do um, like a class on a weekend on Facebook and kind of go over how I manipulate these files um, just to make it you know I don't know that it's any faster by the time I finish messing around with them it's probably not any faster <laughs> but it's just less pieces I have to keep track of to make sure that, you know, I didn't lose them when I'm getting them off the mat. So there is that piece. So that little frame piece will now be one piece that I'll put on top of the gray piece. Okay, so you can see there, there's that little gray piece. And somehow I ended up, like, getting rid of that. And I'm not sure why. I had to go back and put it back on here. Um... So there's gonna be certain little pieces that I'm just gonna to need to um, have extra. So I've got that one in, that I intended on cutting my acetate out of. So you'll see me change the color on it here. And then I ended up just cutting my acetate down to a different color. I'm sorry, that's the gray piece that goes back behind. So you'll see there, you know, now we've got that little gray piece that's gonna line up. That black piece that goes there, we're gonna leave as is. Um, same thing with the little dials. We're gonna leave those as is. And I don't know why I was doing it that way to try to get that up towards the front, but who knows. Um, but we're going to take that gray piece here in just a second and we're going to slice the um, television screen piece into it. Okay, so now I'm going to take my little green piece that is essentially my screen and I'm going to slice that into, and I'm duplicating it just so I don't screw it up, into that gray piece. Um, that you'll see on the untouched one over there on the right. So now I've got that piece that will frame the screen 
and um, I did end up cutting that twice and I'm not sure how I ended up like not putting it on here to start with but I did end up with two of those um, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the oh, that was the piece that I changed the color on intending to cut the acetate and then ended up just cutting the acetate with my trimmer because really there was no point it was a rectangular piece there was, you know all right so you can see now we're down to the brown and the black and I moved that and I really didn't want to move that and the design space was super slow tonight I'm not sure why um, but I'm gonna go ahead and get all of those little black little scrap not scrap like the little detail pieces and I'm just gonna copy those kind of drag them down into that lower section just because that's my way of knowing okay these are the pieces I have already gone through and figured out what I need to do with them or that they need to I don't know why I could not get that to like click where I could just drag it but it happens um, so that I know I've separated them or I've done whatever I needed to do to finish manipulating those okay um, now I just need my two white circles and I'm gonna do the same thing here I'm gonna drag those down and then I'm going to take that brown layer which you could kind of see when I dragged it off to the side there that um, it ends up there's like some little divots I guess you'd call it where that are there to help you line up <coughs> the screen pieces on top of that so okay I've welded that I'm gonna change that to black because that's gonna be my base that I'm gonna cut to build the entire thing on okay so then I'm gonna go down here in my untouched one and I'm gonna copy just that little brown layer and so now you can kind of see those divots um, up at the top there where the antenna are and what I'm gonna do and I was trying to like do a hide contour or something but they are all completely attached so I couldn't um, so I'm gonna go over into my shapes over on the left hand side and I'm gonna find a shape that I can kind of line up over the top of that and slice those off and you know this is one of these tricks that I've learned just from you know playing with this for as many years as I've had as I have you know I have done a lot of manipulation on Cricut files doodlebug files you know just random SVG files to kind of get them to do what I want them to do and this is a lot of how I do it and I mean I'm sure I'm gonna get the people that you know are rabid silhouette users that oh you could do this no you know I have a I have a program to create SVG files I used to be better at it I went for way too long not using it and honestly I need to really sit down and take the time to relearn it and I just I don't have the time so um, this is my workaround because quite honestly I could either go in that file or that program and mess around or I can do it in here in what for me will take about half the time okay so I need to delete my other little piece out of there and then I can do the same thing for the other one and then I have my little antennas for the top and again I don't know why I'm having such a hard time like dragging stuff tonight so I can get rid of those I can get rid of that I can get rid of that and we are ready to cut just about I'm just changing the color so that they will cut um, separately because I am cutting those out of some gold mirror cardstock that I have in my stash okay so I'm gonna go ahead now and I'm gonna hide 
the untouched television so it's still there because so, I'll need to reference that when I go to assemble all this and then I'm gonna get rid of these extra pieces that I don't need and I'm ready to cut okay so let's build our shaker for our cover so I have kind of messed around and manipulated the um, the doodle bug file these are all available on um, shop.lauriewhitlock.com um, I am a huge huge fan of the doodle bug cut files I have been buying them forever um, but I always end up just manipulating them just so I don't have as many small pieces so just something to keep in mind so I've made myself a base layer just by welding um, all of the elements together into one piece just because that's going to make it easier to line everything up the way I want it to go so first piece I'm going to put down is this large um, piece that's going to kind of cover the back part of the television. I was literally just gluing five minutes ago. <laughs> like really, come on. Okay. And then of course we're going to get way too much. All right. line this up like that. I've got another piece for this and for the little feet that I can put on if I want to, but honestly I could leave it just like it is. Um, the little antennas I did cut out of some gold cardstock I had in my stash. And with that you want to be kind of careful because when it's that mirror cardstock like that, if you get glue in the wrong place, it literally shows so badly. Try to make sure I don't have any on my fingers as I get that ready to go. And I know I probably could be using my like little tip on this, but I'm not. <laughs> I'm gonna live dangerously. Okay. So there's those. I am going to go ahead and put this little black piece on just to kind of reinforce that little top where those are. And I'm going to do the same thing with the feet. I seriously might make a box with this and that's the wrong side. That little guy goes over here. Um, I seriously might make a box with this file because it would make a super cute box to put this album in and then I can make it bigger. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do next, I've cut two of my gray pieces here. I'm going to line this up about where it will end up going, well, where it will end up going. And then the cut file itself has five color like stripes. To put for your backing here. I actually just cut it out of the six by six of that same rainbow stripe. So I just need to sit this down where it's going to go. And I'm just going to use that as my template. For where that's gonna go okay so now I've got this little piece that goes around this outside so I'm going to very carefully and probably not with this glue bottle <laughs> because that's just gonna be a disaster waiting to happen I don't know where I put my little one there it is okay so I'm going to just very carefully go around my edges like 
so. And then put this down. Okay. All right. So that's good. Okay. Next up, I'm going to turn this over. I have a piece of acetate that is too big. <laughs> so we're going to trim this down. And I could have cut it with the Cricut, but I didn't want to mess with swapping out settings and all that. So I didn't. Okay. So there's a better whip. And we're going to just kind of line this up. Like so. gluey fingerprints all over this but we can clean it up in just a minute and it will be fine okay so I'm gonna take quarter inch score tape and I'm gonna go around my little television screen here like so So, okay, and I will get the backer off of this. You'll see we've got some um, tape that's kind of around, that's sticking out. It's going to be okay because we're actually going to back it one more time with this. Just to be on the safe side. Make sure I'm lining this upright. And then I'm going to do my tape again. The same way. And the only reason I'm using the tape again is, and you can glue acetate, but I prefer not to. It takes a while to dry. There's always the risk that it's going to slip before it dries. And quite honestly, this works just fine. So, all right, so I'm going to get the backing off of this again. And then we'll put this piece on the back. Now, let's turn it the right way. That would be incredibly helpful, wouldn't it? Okay. So that's set there. I'm going to grab rubbing alcohol. And I'm just going to wipe down my acetate on both sides. And that will get any of my weird little fingerprints off of it any glue that may have escaped from somewhere and that's all set okay so before we actually finish building the shaker we're going to go ahead and 
finish the front of the TV. So I have this little black strip. That's going to sit right down in there. And then I've got a gray strip that's going to go on top of that, so you'll see the black through it. But what I want, because those little knobs should be gold, is I'm going to take a piece off of this scrap, and I'm going to just put it back behind those little holes. I can use a bigger scrap than that. That was like really hard to work with. Uh, much better. Okay, so I'm going to do a little bit of glue up there, line it up behind so it shows through those holes right there, and then I'm going to glue this whole thing down. Next up, we have some little pieces for the dials. Sorry, I need to go back to my actual little thing in Design Space and look at where these actually need to go. Okay. So these are supposed to go like so. I can actually put those on after the fact, but I'm gonna go ahead and build them. So they're ready to go because if I wanted to, I could pop them up on the front of this TV. And somewhere here, with all of these little pieces, I have lost my other little piece like that. Hmm. Or it's still stuck to the. Yeah. I'm missing a piece, but that's okay. we're going to improvise on that in a minute okay so those I'm just going to set aside for right now so what we're going to do is add our foam tape so I have black foam tape however for this side this is going to be too thick okay I'm going to go ahead over here and put it down. And right here. I'm going to actually put it all the way on that thicker end there. And I'm going to look and see see if I still have, I have something ah, there they are okay so I do have some thinner strips which is what I wanted okay so these I'm going to go right up here on that edge and I'm going to come down and around. Okay, like that. I'll grab another one. And do the same thing. So I'm going to start right here where this one ends. Make sure I'm right up against that. Okay. I don't think that one's going to be big enough. 
So we're going to cut that in half. And come all the way around right there. Okay. So now I just need to decide if that's going to be high enough. Still have some gunk on here, so let me fix that. Okay, I think that's going to be big enough because I'm just using some really small, like, glitter dots. Okay, like that. At least I think I want the gold ones. Maybe I want the yellow ones. Actually, I think the yellow ones honestly look more gold. <laughs> At least for what we're trying to do here. So what I'm gonna do is very carefully pour these right there in the middle. I'm gonna get my backing off of my foam tape. up right over the top and push it down which is why I didn't want to put these two pieces on yet because I want to really be able to push this down and there we go we have our shaker I love shakers in case you haven't noticed if you're new here I do lots of shakers I just I don't know they make me happy so I make lots of them so all right so then let's find Just barely too big. Okay, so I'm just gonna use half of a foam square and half of a foam square. Helps to get the backing off if you're trying to actually put it down. Okay, and since I do not have my second one of those, what I'm gonna do instead is I'm just going to take a little strip of that leftover gold cardstock. I'm going to see if that works the way I want it to. No, I don't like that. Never mind. We're not going to do that. <laughs> oh, you know what I have? Oh, that work. Hold on. Where is a scrap of the gray? So this is a little slot punch. However, those are about the right size. little bit small but you know what they'll work just fine okay that works in fact I think I like that that worked really well okay 
Okay. All right. So our little TV shaker is done. I just need to mat the front of this. This will sit on here like that. And then we're gonna just do a little bit more decorating. Okay, so I've still got some more matting to do. I have gone ahead and put our shaker on the front of the album. Um, I did use a piece of the chit chat and then the alphabet soup, um, the new gold alphabet soup, soup puffy stickers on the front here. Um, so I've got my shaker. I use some of the puffy icons um, on the spine and one of the chit chat pieces. And then I just have some more matting and then of course the decorating to wrap up in here. But that is about it. As always, thank you, thank you, thank you for watching. I appreciate you guys um, coming to my channel. Please like, subscribe, and ring the bell if you want to be notified when I post new videos. I have a group on Facebook called Scrap Happy Peeps that is for any and every craft project you make that you want to share and show off what you did. By all means, come over there and share whatever you're making. We don't care if it's one of my tutorials. We don't care if it's paper. Whatever you want to share. Um, and as always, you can find me on Facebook at Scrapping Under the Influence, Instagram at Scrapping Under the Influence, and of course, on my YouTube. Um, have a good night. I'll see you guys next time.